What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. We're at the airport, we're headed to California to the Roar e-bike headquarters. They have a new bike coming out. We're gonna go test it, enjoy this quick travel montage, and we'll see you at Roar. We made it to Blackmore Ranch. We are at the Roar e-bikes press event. Here's the schedule. So we just got here. They've got some mantises over there in the corner that are updated. They haven't let us see them yet. So we got a quick sneak peek. So we're here, we've been kind of exploring a little bit, checking out all the tracks they got. A little more on that in a second, but it's flipping hot because Southern California. So I got the Bucky's hat on, I got the glasses. They're unloading some snacks right now. We got drinks, we got the dinner and the press event media conference tonight. And then tomorrow morning, we're gonna be riding that Mantis out on all these tracks. We'll be doing some sick drone filming. We'll each get to spend some time on it, hit some jumps. We're not very good at jumping, but we're gonna do our best. They say this bike has a ton of improvements from the last time we rode it, so we're super hyped on that. This place is huge. It has a full-size MX jump track over here. You've got this smaller jump track here. It's got a go-kart supermoto track that goes all the way around it. It's got this like quarter mile oval track way over there. It's, this thing is pimped out. This is awesome. We're really excited to test the Mantis. Huge thanks to Roar for having us out. We're looking forward to the event tonight. Look at this flipping big tree. Lance, get off. Oh. We want to be the best performing. I think we've been the best handling. We're now the fastest. And we'll talk about that. We hope you guys will experience that tomorrow. And then style. We're just not bolting a bunch of parts together to make a thing. Um, we're actually uh, devoting a lot of creative energy to the style of the Mantis. Okay, we made it through the press event last night. We heard all the new things about the new Mantis. And we're going to go over those today and we're going to actually test ride it. First, we just want to say we are unbiased to this bike. Rory is not paying us or making us say anything specific about this bike. These are our own opinions. So we're going to see if this new model and the changes that they made can actually change our opinion on the Mantis. As you guys know, in our previous videos, it wasn't our favorite bike. We're hoping they really did some good changes and let's get into what those are. So the things we didn't like most were the battery being too small. We just didn't have the range that we wanted compared to our other e-bikes. We also didn't have as much power as they were saying, so we're hoping we have more. It also just seemed like the power numbers that they were quoting, we weren't ever able to hit that. We weren't able to have a fast enough top speed either. But what they did is they put a 72 volt battery in the new Roar Mantis. And that's crazy because they were able to use the same controller, it's an automotive controller, and they could literally just switch the tune from 60 to 72 volt, supply you with a much larger battery, so this battery is actually the same amp hours as the 60 volt, but 72 with a 35 amp hour battery puts it closer to like a 60, 45 amp hour battery in actual capacity. So our range should be up about 25 to 30%, which is a huge difference. So we're really hoping that that helps. We also should have more power, more torque, so that's the main changes. They've said that there's a few cosmetic things. One thing we didn't like is that there was some protruding bolts on this motor that would dig into your ankle or your moto boot. They have covered that up, so that's great to see. There's gonna be a few other small cosmetic changes here over the next couple of months. We're really hoping that they did fix the display being totally off. The speed was like eight to 10 miles an hour off at any given time, which is just unacceptable. So we're gonna actually go out and ride it now. We're gonna see if all those things made a big enough difference to make us actually wanna purchase this bike over some of the other models available. Oh, and one last thing. The worst part about this bike before was the throttle tune. It had a massive dead band. We couldn't wheelie it. We couldn't trailer ride with it. We couldn't jump it. There was just nothing good about the throttle at all. And that was a Gen 1 throttle. They are now on controller tune number seven. So they're seven tunes in and they added the 72 volt as well, which is usually a little bit smoother. So we're really hoping that this throttle is much better. Otherwise this bike, it's not gonna do it for us. Let's get out and see how it is. All right guys, I took it out on the road. I did a couple passes up the road to bed the brakes in because these bikes are literally brand new. So I bed the brakes in a little bit. Um, throttle does feel way, 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 way better. They designed it to be able to send these big jumps that the, these guys are hitting. 
I mean, you saw that's like a, I don't know, that's a 30, 40, 50 foot tabletop that this bike can clear. So it can do it. Like if the rider knows what they're doing, you can do it. If I was a better rider, then I could do it too. But I also mentioned, I just don't ride motocross and this bike was apparently designed mostly for motocross riders, which I don't really know why they chose that design. I know Talari and Suron, they stick a little bit more to the more all around. People don't normally take those to motocross as much. Um, as they usually just are taking their big bikes. I love, like my Talaria for trail riding. That's what I'm riding it on. I ride it on the road too. And for me, I still like it better. I don't know. 72 volt, it does give this bike more pep than it used to have. I think it's pretty close to a stock Sting R, but I think a stock Sting R might still pull a little bit harder. I don't have one here to say for sure. I still just think it probably pulls a little bit harder, but it's great to be out here. We're having a good time. We'll keep riding this bike for the next couple hours, see how it does, see how the battery does as it gets lower and lower but it's freaking hot you guys probably see i'm dripping sweat and all this hot riding gear but we'll catch you guys in the next clip all right guys we are headed out on the motocross track on the new mantis i don't ride motocross very much at all so we'll see how this goes but there's some jumps that are way too big for me on here some loose motocross corners we'll see how it goes here You guys saw me do that wheelie on our first gen bike we tested a couple months back we couldn't wheelie it to save our lives the throttle tune was so bad they totally fixed it they're on i think gen 7 on the throttle tune yep. it's way better way better on the track as you guys saw we were ripping it this bike is pretty sweet now it's got way more power with that 72 volt you could wheelie this all day long the balance points pretty good so yeah All right, you guys, we're gonna take a 100% charge new 72 volt Roar Mantis out on this straight road and we'll see if we can get a top speed. I got my phone GPS. I don't have the cycling computer today. Let's see how it goes. All right, you guys, we got up to exactly 50 miles an hour. So it was like 49.9 for a long time and then 50 and then 49.9. So that is way, 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 way better than it used to be. Before we only literally got 39 miles an hour on the GPS, which is horrible. When they quoted it to go 50 miles an hour before, now it actually does go 50 on flat. I'm 185 pounds and that was with a 100% charged battery. So that is great to hear. The speedometer was saying a little bit faster than that, like 53, but within a couple miles an hour, that's not too bad. Let's tell Reed the good news. Okay, so we went exactly 50 after a long, long pull, but it, it got there pretty quick. And it was like 49, 47, and then it went up to 50. That's really good news. So that, I was telling them we What's only got- it saying? It was saying just a little bit above. So it was like 52, 53 when I was at 50. So like close enough, right. that's close enough. Yeah. Before we were, it was, we were going 39 on the GPS and it was saying like 48, 49, even 50 sometimes, which is just ridiculously off. So that's acceptable. That's way faster, way better. If we um, fixed that, we would have been Yeah, mad. yeah, we would have been pretty mad. <laughs> Finally getting out on the 72 volt Rar Mantis. They, I think they fixed everything. It really does that 50 mile an hour top speed now. We just tested it. This thing wheelies like crazy. The work that they've done on the bikes is actually really, really cool. I've been hitting some of these jumps out here. They've got a huge dirt jump track. Lance will show some of the drone clips, but this thing rips. That front suspension is still lacking. I would say the MX-4 has still got this bike in that department, but overall, this bike freaking rips. Now, the bike is heavy. That's just something to get used to. The power is definitely there for the weight of the bike. It's handling it very, very well. Getting out on the track it is so much fun. I haven't been able to spend very much time on a track. I really need to get out here with my Talaria. I would feel so comfortable on that thing, but this thing freaking rips on this track. All these improvements that the bike has on it 
have made a night and day difference from the Gen 1s that lots of people have. I think with this new bike update, RAR being the first 72 volt production lightweight bike to be on the market, it really shows that the company is trying to innovate and trying to be that like top tier lightweight e-moto brand and hopefully they're here to stay. Their rear linkage is really doing great. Even on the casing, these jumps like I am, keep in mind these are huge jumps. We don't really do motocross stuff. What is lacking is the front fork. That front fork is bottoming out even on the smallest jump. You feel, you still feel like you're springing back up fairly quickly, but you are feeling like it's bottoming it out. I want to say a huge shout out to RAR for bringing us out here to their huge 72 volt press event. It's been a total blast. These bikes are awesome. It is always good to have new competition and new bikes in this market because it really is a fast, fast growing market and there's not many bikes like this one out there. All right guys, you've pretty much heard all of our thoughts from the previous clips, us out riding the bike, testing the top speed. We do a quick little recap here and just try to iron out all the changes, give you our thoughts. I'm gonna kind of speak for all of us. We just had a little informal Tall Air Boys meeting, kind of going over our actual thoughts on this bike. Would we purchase it now? Is it worth the money? All those kind of things. So the improvements they made did make a big difference in a lot of ways. That throttle feels so much better than when we rode it. They're on that seventh gen tune. The 72 volt battery is smoother. It does have more punch. It, they say it has about 20% more torque and power than it previously did. I think that's about right. I think that feels about right. Um, I would say it feels pretty similar to the speed of a stock Talaria Sting R. I think it's faster than a Sting MX-3. I think it's faster than a stock Suron Light BX. It's close between a Sting R. I think a Sting R might still just have it. Um, we were able to go that 50 miles an hour top speed, which is great. I'm very happy about that. I'm very happy that they fixed the display. So now it's within only one, two, maybe three miles an hour off. So that's acceptable. That's acceptable. Our old bike was 10 off. That is just ridiculous. Okay, quickly, we're gonna go over the things that we didn't like before that haven't changed. So there's, and there's some of the things aren't necessarily things you can change even with upgraded parts. First being the motor. So before there was bolts protruding in these six spots that you would dig into your ankle when you weren't wearing full motocross boots. They did cover them up and make it better. You can still feel them. You don't feel the motor or anything right here on a Suron or a Talaria. So that is one thing we still don't like. The motor also gets really hot and with it being right next to your ankle, it can literally burn your ankle if you're not wearing like full motocross boots which most of the time you're not going to be unless you're at the motocross track riding really hard. Suron and Talaria have their motor up here down out of the way and you just can't feel any of the heat coming off of it. So that's one of the main things. Um, for me these cross members that come, Reed show that camera straight down, they actually stick out wider than the seat. So when I stand up on this bike and try to hug the frame with my knees, these are digging into my calves. So that is kind of, kind of in the way for me. I am very tall, so that might not be an issue for you. I think the seat bump right here, I already mentioned that earlier. I don't mind a seat bump, but it's in the wrong spot. It is just too far forward. Like I, I need to be sitting right here and have a seat bump right here. Because then I could sit right there, I'd be in a perfect spot. Again, they are catering this to like motocross riders, which I don't quite understand because I, I don't understand who's gonna buy this bike and take it to the track as their motocross bike. There's just, there's other bigger, better bikes like gas bikes that are gonna be way more fun at a motocross track. I think the people that buy Surrounds and Talarias, myself included, are buying this to ride trails, do wheelies on the street, ride around the neighborhood, like cruise around the town, like all that kind of stuff. And you can also take it to a motocross track, that's fine. But I think some of the things designed on this specifically for motocross aren't ever going to be used or are, are, make, are limiting the bike in the other areas that the bike is most likely going to be ridden in, if that makes sense. So it's just something to think about. It's, it's sort of an interesting target audience, I think, with Roar. We are very excited because they are innovating very quickly. They, they kind of have a new head team that is really pushing the boundaries. They really want to be the most popular e-moto brand. And so they're going after the brand. They're doing good marketing and they are innovating very quick. I mean, they've already changed a lot of things 
really rapidly on this bike and it is a huge improvement don't get me wrong from the one we tested before mm -hmm. it's a big difference but i just think it's not necessarily the exact bike for me and i'm still picking that Talaria sting r but we are excited for what they come out with in the future they do have other bikes coming down the line um, I don't know a ton about them, but next year there should be some other offerings from them. They also have an app coming out, I've been told, within a month for this bike where you'll actually be able to connect with a Bluetooth module and you can actually do some tuning to your controller. So what that opens up, I don't know, but they'll be the first one to do that on a stock bike, especially in this price point. So excited to see that, looking forward to it. Another thing that we were a little disappointed with in our first test on this bike is that it has no rear suspension linkage. And again, this bike is sort of being designed as motocross and it worked fine on the jumps. Like it was supportive, it was stiff, it's good on the landings, but in our Utah tight trails with rocks, it was not plush at all. So that's just something we don't like as much for, I think a lot of the ways this bike is gonna be ridden, it's not as good as a bike with a linkage. Also, there, the marketing on this bike is that it comes with a 72 volt from the factory for still $5,000, which is a great price for a 72 volt battery. Because on a Surana Talaria, you'd have to spend $3,000 to upgrade to 72 volt. You have to do a controller and a battery, but here's the difference, okay? This 72 volt battery on this controller is just as fast as a stock Talaria Sting R. So it's just as fast as a stock 60 volt Talaria when you do a 72 volt in a Surana or a Talaria with a expensive controller that you're spending $3,000 on that setup, you can get double and triple the power of this bike. This bike, seven and a half kilowatts, you can get up to 20, 24,000 mm -hmm. watts out of an upgraded 72 volt on a Talaria or Suron. So that just needs to be said, yes, this is 72 volt. No, it's not any faster than a stock Talaria Sting R 60 volt and it's not worth $3,000 more. You're not getting this massive price reduction because it's as fast as a 72 volt Talaria or Suron. So I think all the changes that they made did level this bike up in a huge way. But the question is still, would we buy this over a Talaria Sting R or a stock Suron Lite BX? I think, so we talked about this. Our opinion is we would buy this over a stock Sting MX-3. We would probably buy this over a Suron Lite BX, but we would still for sure take a Talaria Sting R over this bike. But if, you're, if you want to upgrade this bike, which we would, then we would that would go backwards. We'd still for sure get a Sting R and we'd still pick a Suron Lite BX over this and we would still pick an MX-3 because there's upgrades available for all those bikes. There's a few things you can do on this, but still not very much. They're just, a lot of things about it don't have a great upgrade path to it. You can still do bar, you can do stem, you could do suspension. Um, there's some stuff you can do, but the upgrade path is gonna be a lot slower and it's just not set up right now to buy and put big power through this bike. I don't know of a controller upgrade, don't know of a motor upgrade, not that it needs it necessarily. We will probably be doing a little bit more testing on this bike in the future back on our home trails in Utah. Um, there is a 72 volt version in Utah at our rep. So we'll probably be doing a little more filming with it in the future. I don't know when exactly, I don't know the details of that, but we are excited to spend a little more time on it in Utah. We're really thankful for Roar sending us out here. It's been a great event. It's been great coming to Blackmore Ranch. It's a beautiful spot. I wish we rode motocross more so that we could really take advantage of the jumps. Like Alex was doing yeah. pretty good. I just, there's something in my head that's limiting me from getting that big air time, but I love, I love we'll, the trails. We'll, we'll so to we're gonna yeah. work up to it. Uh, the bike does wheelie a lot better. I just had to throw that in there. It, it, it's possible to wheelie it now. So I think you could have fun doing that on it. But uh -huh. thanks for watching guys. We really appreciate it. We have some really cool videos coming soon. So hit that subscribe button. We also just dropped our merch. So go check out our description. We got the Talaria Boys merch. Go get yourself some. If there's something you want that you don't see on there, drop a comment, let us know. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next video. See ya. See ya.